things are certainly looking up on the 180 gallon reef. I mean, this tank just two months ago was in horrible shape. Um, completely overgrown with algae, lots of overgrown corals, dead skeletons everywhere, algae all over them, aptasia all over the place. Um, it was in bad shape. But I've been working hard to kind of get this back into shape, and I want to, you know, really make this a showpiece again. And it was nobody's fault but my own, but <clears throat> I'm uh, getting it back together, and the hard work is starting to produce some results. Uh, so algae is definitely uh, turning the corner on that. Hair algae was everywhere, and I've just been, you know, manually removing doing water changes, um, scrubbing the rocks, you know, with toothbrush and everything, just kind of getting as much out as I possibly can manually. I've been running some GFO, some little bit of Fosgard. I mean, multiple things going on here, dosing some Vibrant. And I'll say, um, together, everything seems to be working. I mean, there's still patches in here that I need to deal with, and I will. Uh, but for the most part, even and it's starting to, I, I can see rocks again, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, removed a lot of the dead uh, corals. You know, a lot of things had grown really big, and everything underneath of them, you know, had died. Uh, so, fragging out a bunch of stuff, just kind of repositioning things. Um, and I've really opened up the tank. I think the fish are going to be a lot happier. So a lot more swimming room for them. Kind of was able to, everything had creeped forward. So I kind of pushed a lot of stuff back uh, to give the fish a lot more room. And I think they're liking it. A lot more flow uh, in there. Uh, for instance, this giant leather was up a lot closer to the you know, front of the tank, kind of in the middle. I was able to push that back. Um, not easy, though. I mean, you know if you're working in a reef tank, you know, you touch one thing, it's a domino effect. Everything starts falling apart, uh, which is what I've been dealing with and just slowly uh, working on stuff. I pretty much started on the right-hand side and kind of started working my way to the left. And um, these are a lot of the corals that I just had. Uh, some of them we're in better shape than others, kind of just repositioning things. Uh, but I'm liking how this is all starting to shape up. I'm going to kind of have a lot of different manipuras in this area. I have some spots up top. I'm going to put some macros up there. Um, in the back, I've got some you know, bird's nests. I know it. See, the thing is, with a lot of these corals, I've had them for a long time, and I know exactly how they grow. Uh, so I'm able to put them in much better positions now. And I think uh, in a few months' time... Uh, we'll start to see the results, and you know if the growth patterns uh, follow what they think, what I think they will, um, this will really start to take shape uh, as they start to fill in. So um, can't wait to see that. Uh, still have some work to do in here. I don't want any of these uh, orange uh, Montipora, those plating ones, up high because I know what they do. They grow straight out, and they'll shade everything under it and kill things off. Uh, so, yeah, so they've probably got to go. I'll find spots lower down for them. Uh, like, for instance, over here. They'll be okay down there. Uh, these two colonies, I like, for sure, this Stylophora, um, I think I want to cut that right there. You know, it's getting too high up, and I think it'll look a lot nicer because you, you can't really see the bottom half is all kind of white because there used to be a big colony of something else here. And that'll probably never color up again because just the way the light hits it. So I think I might chop that down a bit. Again, this is a really cool purple coral with um, green highlights and everything. But you can't see it because it's up too high. I might have to cut that down and bring it lower so you can see it again. <clears throat> so still a lot of work to do, um, but I'm working on it. Uh, over here on this side, uh, it's still a mess. Um, this uh, euphelia, this hammer coral, it's just kind of a jumbled mess right now. I kind of just put everything there until I can deal with it. <clears throat> I was cutting off all the dead heads. I mean, this thing started as just like a little two-head frag that I had gotten, you know, years ago. I don't know if you can see, all the way down there, there was like a, a disc. 
and I mounted the original frag plug or frag on, and it grew, and it sprouted all these other heads. But from down there all the way up to there, I mean, it's probably a foot tall, maybe 13, 14 inches. That's how big that had grown, and it was basically a big sphere at one point, um, like the size of a, you know, a beach ball, you know, a basketball or something. Um, eventually, it just kind of split because it just couldn't you know, hold up under its own weight, especially when you start moving it. Um, so, yeah, i got to trim all that back up and uh, make that look nice again. Uh, i got my rock flower and enemies down here in this area. They seem to like it down here because I've got an automatic feeder that drops pellets in, and anything the fish don't get lands on them, and they gobble it right up. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so a lot, lot, lot of work to do, uh, but it's really uh, coming back coming back together. So uh, I'm, I'm liking what I see. The water quality looks really good. I mean, it's nice and crystal clear now. Um, <clears throat> phosphates, I pretty, I'm getting them you know, under control. I mean, at one point, I think they, they measured at 1.76 on the Hannah Checker, like 1.76. That's crazy. Um, measured them this morning. I think it was down to 0.09 maybe, something like that. Eight, nine, I have to double check. Uh, nitrates, had, we're up at 50, holding there for months. And I've been doing water changes, uh, trying to do like 50 gallons a week. And I eventually got that down to 25. And then this morning I tested it and got them down to uh, 10, which is pretty good. I'd like to hold it there. So yeah, water quality looking good. Um, equipment wise, I'm still trying to tune in my calcium reactor, which um, that's new for this tank, which is set up now. Um, so right next to it, I got finally got one of those uh, tridents which is in a testing cycle right now, which is pretty awesome. I'm able to film, <laughs> you know, a video, and it's doing my testing for me. I love it. That's a game changer. I mean, I'm kind of surprised I waited as long as I did to get it, but they were hard to come by for a while. Uh, but anyway, I'll probably get into all this stuff at a later time. But yeah, I've got my calcium reactor hooked up, um, and this Trident is really awesome at helping me uh, figure out, you know, how I need to tune that. So that's good. Um, got my GFO, some carbon, and like I said, got a little bit of phosphor in there. Just packing it all in there, see what works. Uh, got my skimmer, and Chato's still growing uh, in there, in my refugium. So yeah, so I'm not going to ramble on too long here. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of give that quick update. Oh, uh, few new additions as far as fish go. Um, I had some pretty colorful fish up in my 25 gallon tank um, that never really got any attention and kind of you know sitting in a room all by themselves. So I've been trying to catch the fish out of that tank and bring them in here. Um, some are not too exciting but it's still fish I like. Uh, yellow chorus wrasse which I got at Rifa Palooza a couple years ago. Uh, he's still around. I got this little blue damsel. I mean, you know, don't judge me. I still like damsels. This guy is pretty harmless. I know he could turn on me at any time, but uh, he's he does fine in here. Um, he's kind of staked his claim on this mountain over here. And who else did I capture? My flame hawkfish. Oh, there he is back there. So he's now in here. Uh, let see him in the back. So he's enjoying life. And I still have two other fish upstairs that I want to catch. Um, an orchid dotty back. And I do have a second yellow chorus wrasse. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put him in here in the 40 breeder. It's to be determined. But I still need to catch him first. Um, and then other new arrivals. I did have that little shark nose goby. I put two of them in here. They were out of quarantine. Um, one had been hanging around this area. Don't know where he's at right now. And the second one was on the other side of the tank for several days, but it's kind of disappeared. I don't know where that guy is at now. Uh, so I'll keep my eyes open for him. And then there is a yellow watchman goby. Uh, replaced the one that I lost. That was my very first saltwater fish was a yellow watchman goby. Had one for years, and then just one day he just died. Don't know why. Uh, but there's a new one back in here somewhere. Probably won't see him today. And 
yeah, so that's about it. So, yep, that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.